Engaging. Enlightening. Informative. This is WLOX News This Week. Hi, I'm Dave Elliott. Thanks so much for joining me. Well, we're going to start with sports betting here in Mississippi. We've been talking about it for a long time. And joining us now, State Senator Mike Thompson, who is on the Legislative Mobile Online Sports Betting Task Force. Senator, good to see you, and thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Let's start with the task force. Uh, 13 members. I think the Peer Evaluation Committee has to have a report from you guys by December 15th or so, just before the session starts. You've had one meeting. What happened in that first meeting? Uh, the first meeting was basically an opportunity for the individual members of the committee, or I refer to it more as a study committee, to, uh, adr to express their concerns relative to their positions. We've got property owners from casinos on the coast and up in Tunica and Vicksburg. We've got the executive director, for, or the commissioner rather, for the Department of Revenue. Um, and we've got uh, representative from DraftKings mm -hmm. on the on the gaming commission well. too, and the gaming commission yeah. as well. So, well, what are your concerns? Let's start with you personally. You're the Coast guy, so you're really representing the biggest uh, uh, contingency, the biggest uh, constituency, if you will. Sure. Well, well, my primary concerns are to make sure that we don't do anything in Mississippi that jeopardizes the destination gaming product that Mississippi gaming has been built on. Um, that's very important to me, both personally, but also for my constituents. I think that at one point in time, we had nearly 80% of our casino traffic was drive-in traffic. And we know that those patrons don't necessarily stay on the casino properties full time. They go out in the community, they eat at restaurants, they go fishing, they go and tour and visit towns like Bay St. Louis and Ocean Springs, uh, past Christian. So we know that uh, that destination gaming product is important to the entire coast. But one of the, and I hate to say dirty little secrets, but one of the stories is that the industry itself, the operators themselves aren't even on the same page. You take a huge Beau Rivage over here, you take an Island View over here in Gulfport, two different operators, two different kind of corporate structures all together. So if the industry isn't on the same page with what they think is right, how can the legislature craft responsible legislation? Well, I think that it, that's that's one of the challenges. Certainly, when I first got uh, into the state into the state legislature a few years ago, that was one of the charges that the gaming committee gave to the industry was, "Can you guys come up with a consensus on uh, mobile sports betting and what that could look like?" And there were very very different concerns, uh, and they were not able to come up with a consensus. But it's something that we're looking at now, and of course, the input from our from our local casino operators is very, very important to that because... You know, but there's a second side of this. There is the casino industry, but then in the bigger picture, it's 2023, Senator, DraftKings, FanDuel, Caesars, BetMGM. Mississippi citizens can't sit at home in 2023 in America and on their phone place a sports bet. That's correct. That has nothing to do with casinos. That has to do with this geofencing where we don't allow it in the state of Mississippi. Uh, I do think it has, some, it has everything to do with casinos from the standpoint that it would all fall under the Mississippi Gaming Commission who promulgates regulations that govern the gaming industry, including casinos. I also think that we have to be very, very careful about how we approach this. There are uh, regulations in place and house rules in place to prevent underage gambling, to prevent problem gambling, uh, you know, those regulations, how do they translate into the mobile app world? Um, there's also other concerns that have come up from, from the online betting. Um, we saw a few weeks ago over in Iowa State where uh, football players were caught yeah, uh, betting. betting on games that they played. Yeah, but you're not going to stop that. I mean, that's going to happen. So if we talk about the well, casinos, uh, MGM is the only one where you can actually, on your phone, from on the casino property, though. Correct. Because that's Geofence the, of the yeah, property. Yeah, on the property can do it. So when they first came, allowed sports betting, they said it was going to be a great amenity, and you talked about it, bringing people on the property. You know, they'd gamble, they'd buy food, they'd go out to the other communities and do the same thing. But younger demographics and a lot of other people, and this is a concern for the casino industry and I guess uh, the state because of tax revenue, might want to just sit at home and place bets, right? Well, let's, on their phones. I and I, I understand and appreciate that, but I think that it has to be implemented in a way that's in a responsible way, where 
the operators uh, make sure that they have measures in place to prevent abuses like what we saw in Iowa State, to prevent underage gambling. Uh, you know, your phone, there's something, there's something about the human psyche when you drive up to a casino, walk through the doors, have your ID checked, and walk in and place your bet. That's tangible. You know that that's happening. I think that we all have to acknowledge that sometimes things that happen on our phone are intangible, including exchanging money. So I think that we have to make certain that the proper rules and regulations are in place to address underage gambling, compulsive gambling, people who yeah. abuse it. I know, but as a conservative, you are a conservative, right? One might say, why is Senator Thompson not following the old conservative rule, keep government out of our lives? Well, I think that there's a, there's, there's a balance to that, right? It's not just keeping government out of your life. It's that things, there are things in your life that government regulates and has to do that in a, in a responsible way. And this is one of those, this is one of those things. So what do you think is going to happen? Because as I say to me, the genie's out of the bottle. I mean, all around the country on this mobile sports betting. There's no stopping it. Not only is it here to stay, it's just growing by leaps and bounds. Do you remember when... Uh, anything to do with gambling couldn't be associated with any of the four major sports leagues, and now they have stadiums named after them. Now they are advertisements on every football game you watch, every major league baseball sure. game you watch. So, I mean, it's just exploding, multi-billion dollar industry. So what do you think is going to happen in 2024 when the legislature gets together and looks at all of this? Well, I think you got, well, to, to touch on your point about the, the industry, the DraftKings FanDuel industry, they currently have, from what I understand, about 75 to 80 percent of the market share, and uh, both of those companies post record losses year over year. They're not a profitable business. What I, one of the things that I'm mindful of is uh, iGaming, that, that the mobile sports book is just a segue to iGaming, and that is something that I think could very well hurt our destination gaming product. And I would, I'm very mindful of that. We saw it, it's, they've done it in New Jersey, mm -hmm. um, and a couple other states have full-on eye gaming. And that's something that I don't know if that falls in line with the policies initiative, the policy initiatives behind casino gaming on the coast, which is jobs, tourism, capital. Well, investment. we have to protect the goose that lays the golden egg, right? Sure. The casinos. I mean, we have to, we have to take that into consideration. Uh, last question, really, because we don't have a lot of time left. Uh, do you predict that 2024 will be the year that, because everything that's been in committee has just been left to wither on the vine and die. Do you think we're going to see something in 2024 that uh, the legislature is going to have a chance to vote on? I think, they'll, they'll, I think there'll be a bill this year. Yeah. What it looks like, I don't know. As Chairman Blunt said uh, during our initial meeting of the study committee, this will be. This is a. This is not something that'll be addressed early in the session. This is something that'll likely be kicked around for a little while and, and be studied and looked at as we as we go through. There's but you a think lot something of different will come factors. out. I, I would expect something yeah. will come out. Senator Mike Thompson, good to see you. Thanks. So and much. Uh, keep up the good work on the task force, and we look forward to talking to you again on this subject. Thank you.